All right, we're starting out laying down today. I like to start laying down and allow the body just to relax on the floor. Let the spine get a little bit longer. And we can allow the whole front body to really expand if we're laying down. Maybe put one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And you can connect to the rise and fall of your chest and belly with your breath. Little wave up as the breath comes in. And then both of your hands will seek a little bit as the breath goes out. See if you could breathe equally into chest and belly so that both hands rise and fall at the same rate. Breathing through your nose as much as you can. Allow that breath to get bigger and deeper and longer. Until you really do feel like you're filling all of your available lung space with the inhale. Emptying your lungs to the max on the exhale. Begin to employ the belly muscles on the exhale, big time, okay? Using that, especially there's a strip of muscle that runs around your middle called your transversus abdominis. When you contract it, it pulls the belly inward on all sides, front, back, and sides. That's how we get the deep exhales that we want here. And that's one of the main muscles that keeps our low back safe and happy. Also helps digestion, okay, and posture. So keep that transversus abdominis toned and balanced and it's great for your back. And the best way we can do that is by using it to breathe deeply. Take stock of your body here. Notice what's going on in your body today. Notice where you feel the most, maybe most tension, or maybe there are places that you feel really good. You feel strong, open. Notice all of that equally. Maybe now that we've been breathing deeply here for a moment, you could actually pick up your shoulders and move them a little further away from your hips and spread your shoulders out a little more. Okay, finding a little extra length in your spine now that there's maybe a little softness in it. It takes these next few breaths just to watch your thoughts. Noticing any thought or emotion that arises without getting caught up. So just observe, please. Let's start to move a little bit. Okay, so if you bend your knees, feet are up by your hips, feet come wide, probably wider than your mat would feel pretty good. We'll start to draw the knees side to side. Okay, windshield wipers. This is one of my favorite ways to wake up the hips. Internal rotation, external rotation. 
Low back is getting massaged and wrung out. Maybe get some little adjustments here in your low back. All right, starting to really activate the knees downward now. See how much you'd like to activate them downward, okay? Pulling them down more will give you more internal and external uh, opening in your hips. So decide what feels right. Okay, maybe allowing that twist to move further up into your spine, into your middle back. And next time your knees point up, pause. Pick up your knees and float them over your hips. And if it's all right with your head, with your, uh, with your neck, lift your head and shoulders up off the floor. You can think of reaching for the front of the mat. Okay, so feeling your abdominus rectus engage allows, okay, allowing your low back to let go toward the floor a little bit. So kind of embrace that contrast. Abs are engaged, low back is kind of caving downward toward the floor. And if everything's going well here, you can reach up. If you want a little bit extra, you can reach back. So find where you'd like your arms to be on that spectrum. And keep your legs in this very crisp right angle. Let's tap one of your toes to the floor. Just tap one toe down and then pick it back up. Keep the right angle, tap the other toe down, pick it up. So we'll go side to side, tap, pick it up, keep breathing, tap, pick it up. Okay, I like to exhale on the effort, going down with the toe and inhale, bringing the toe back up. Keep going, keep breathing, nice and slow. If you need a little less, you can put your hands down by your hips and you can even put your head down, no problem. You can even bend your knees in towards your chest more like I'm showing you. So keep it up. I'd like to take a few more breaths here. Make sure your neck is long on all sides, please. You're not squinching your chin in too much. If you really want some extra, extend your legs completely and think of pointing one toe out and then up, other toe out and then up. Keep it going, toe and toe. One more on each side. Side, two side, all right, let that go. Bend your knees, pull them in, allow your body to relax. Hopefully notice some nice warmth in your abs, nice release in your low back, and then drop your feet to the floor by your hips. Drop your hands to the floor as well. And we'll do some bridges. So before we come up into this bridge posture, we wanna make sure we have some, uh, some engagement in the legs. So make sure that you have a little tennis ball of space between your knees and the knees are engaging inward, okay? Strong engagement inward with all the legs, all two of them. So pointing your nose straight at the ceiling will keep the back of your neck off the floor. And then you can lift the hips on the inhale and lower them on the exhale. Let's take a few more breaths like that, lift and lower. So we warmed up the abs and the front body and the front body. And now we're gonna warm up the back body a little bit more. So as you move, try to keep that tennis ball between your knees, try to keep your nose pointed up. And then let's start to make this a little bit more rolly, rolling the spine down one vertebra at a time, rolling the spine up. The whole time, the tailbone is moving away from the top of your head, as if you're trying to lengthen your spine with each movement, which in fact, you are. <laughs> We're always looking for length in the spine. That's always one of our primary goals. Next time you come up, hold right there and breathe. Perhaps bend your elbows and push them down so that your fingers point up like robot arms. And then from here, get a sense of the strength and stability of the upper body, okay? There's more of your upper body on the floor here than your lower. So let's use it. 
The back of your head is on the floor. Push down a little bit into the back of your head so your nose points up and you feel that you've got some uh, strength in the back of the neck. Push down into your shoulder blades and your elbows. Some strength in your arms here too. And then let's think about the heels. With your tailbone pointing away from the top of your head, try to pull your heels towards your shoulder blades, activating the backs of your legs. Okay, keep the left leg active, just like that. Keep pulling that left heel towards your shoulder blades and get the right leg up. Okay, right leg points forward at the front of the mat. Right leg points up. Again, right leg points forward. Keep breathing. Right leg up. Again, right leg. And up. Three more times. Point it out. Point it up. Two more times. Keep that left leg strong. Point it up. One more. Point it out. Point it up. Okay, the right leg is up in the air. Hold here. If you need a break, of course, drop the right foot. Take that break. But if everything's going well, extend that right toe really high. Maybe push a little bit into this left foot and try to move the right toes toward the back of the mat behind your head. Hold and breathe. Stay strong here. Look up. And let it go, drop the right foot, left leg up, left leg is up now, the right leg is the strong leg. Trying to pull that right heel towards your shoulder blades, keep that leg active. Left leg points forward, left leg points up. Again, forward and up, keep breathing. The upper body is strong on the floor, the right heel is dragging backward, forward. And up, two more times, forward, up, last one, forward, up, hold here and breathe. Maybe take a break if you need it, maybe reach a little higher with that left toe, press down with the right and hooray, maybe move that left foot toward the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Nice strength for the legs and one more breath here. Ah, oh, let it go. Both feet down. Let your hips down. Maybe take some windshield wipers here just to shake that off. Okay, we got the back body warm. Legs warm. As you're ready here, tuck your hands behind your knees. And we'll rock it up a few times. Roll it down. So getting that little... Back massage from the mat. See if you can balance when you come up. <laughs> Balancing in a little boat posture when you come up. Come on up. The next time you come up, hold right there in your boat. Okay, Navasana. We have our longest spine here. Okay, and you can drop your fingers and toes like I'm showing you, no problem. Go ahead and drop them if you, if you need that. But if it works okay, see if you can just grab behind your knees, find a little balance here. If you don't need to grab your knees, go ahead and reach forward. So find where you'd like to be there. And I'd like to get a little bit more into your core. Are you ready? Okay, as controlled and slow as you can, roll your lower back, just your lower back onto the floor and then roll it back up to a boat, okay? You can think of inhale to roll it back, exhale to roll it up. Let's do it a few more times, inhale, and exhale. Keep it going. Find that core strength, find that fluidity of movement, just as controlled as you can be. If you want a little more here, if you want a little extra, extend your legs. And maybe when you come down to that half boat, reach behind you. Exhale, boat. Inhale, half boat. Navasana. Ardha Navasana. Three more times. Navasana. Ardha. Two more. Last one. Come down to the half boat, hold and breathe. 
Okay, you can drop your hands and bend your knees if you need to, but keep those abs strong. Pull the belly button to the spine. Two more breaths. Last breath. Nice. Let that go. Tuck your hands behind your knees. And this time, rock yourself all the way up to a seat. All right, friends. Lean back on your hands here. Let's take some really big windshield wipers. And I'd like to get into your hips a little bit and do some hip strengthening. Okay, a little homework. <laughs> so next time your knees are dropping over to the right. Let's just pause here and arrange ourselves nicely. So I'll turn to face you. Line your uh, right shin up with the front or the side of your mat, wherever you are. Line that right shin up and then take the left leg, point the left knee out to the left. And then you might use your fingers to kind of support yourself here. So when you look down, everything is at a right angle. Okay, we call this a 90-90, so we have 90 degrees everywhere. Your feet are flexed at the ankle. Your knees are at very nice 90 degrees. Your femurs make sort of a 90 degree with each other, okay? And even your upper body, you're attempting to be as upright as possible, although it is challenging, okay? So arrange the legs nicely. If it's too much, guys, just pull your feet in towards your hips. No problem, okay? But try to stick with the 90-90 if you can. And we'll get some good work done. So it's hard to stay upright. I know, that's part of your challenge. But if you need to, yes, you can lean on your right hand. There's no problem with doing that. But I do want you to challenge yourself to stay upright as you can with as little support as you can. As a matter of fact, if you can, just cross your arms so that you're not using them, okay? So here we go, we'll play around first with the left leg, sorry, with the right leg, the one in front of you. So look at the front leg. And from here, we'll just lift the, uh, lift the leg up off the floor. So try that with me, just lift it up off the floor, hover, and then set it back down. That was challenging, okay? Inhale when the leg is down. Exhale when the leg floats up. Inhale, let it go. Exhale, lift it up. Again, inhale, release. Exhale, bring it up. One more time, we're gonna hold this time. So inhale as you release on the floor. Exhale, hover the leg. Let's hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Set the leg down. Notice how that feels. Allow the right leg to rest right now. Let's bring our attention to the left leg. So for now, we'll just lift the left foot, okay? You'll keep your left knee on the ground. Hover your left foot. That's going to mean that you'll have to internally rotate your left hip, okay? Ready? Inhaling here, everything's on the ground. Exhale on the effort. Hover that left foot up off the ground, internally rotating the hip. Inhale, release the left foot. Exhale, hover it. Again, inhale. Exhale, hover. One more time. This time, let's lift the whole leg off the ground. Ready? Exhale, lift the left leg off the ground. Hover for five, four, three, two, one. Let it go. Okay, try this. Try leaning back on your hands. Take a few more windshield wipers here, side to side. Check out how your hips are feeling. Okay, you might be getting some good sensation in there. Maybe some pops. <laughs> and then next time your knees are dropping to the left, let's hang out there and we'll do the other side. So same thing on the other side. Arrange your knees into this nice, crisp, 90 degree situation. The left shin is lined up with the front of your mat. Okay, ankle flexed, knee at a nice 90, and the right knee points directly out to the right. Everything there is at 90 degrees. Okay, so doing your best to be an organic form in, in a very geometric shape. <laughs> so you can lean to the left, 
not a problem. Do your best to accept as little support from the floor as you need to. So find that, that moment of challenge. Okay, ready to lift the left leg now. We'll lift the whole leg up. We'll sink us externally rotating the left hip now when we have to lift the leg. So here we go, inhaling on the floor. Exhaling, hover that left leg. <sighs> Inhale, let it go. Exhale, hover. Let it go. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. This one will hold. Okay. Exhale. Float the leg. Hold. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let it go. Right leg now. We'll start by just lifting the right foot. We'll have to internally rotate the right hip now. Ready? Inhale on the floor. Exhale, hover the right foot. Inhale, release. Exhale, hover. Release. And hover. One more, this time the whole leg, okay? The whole right leg. Exhale, hover the right leg. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let it go. Lean back on your hands. Windshield wiper it out. Great work in the hips, okay? Balancing right to left, inner to outer. Okay, as you're ready, point your knees to one side and flip yourself all the way over to hands and knees. Let's get the wrists. So turn your right hand over so you're looking at your palm. Fingers are pointed back at you and drop that right wrist under your right shoulder. Let's take some down, uh, some cat cows here, okay? So heart pulls forward on the inhale. And exhale, push the floor away. Take some time here, just cat cow. Very slow, controlled, move with your breath. Always let the breath set the pace when you can. Let the movement fit into the breath rather than vice versa. See if you can find some extra space in your heart when you pull it forward and in your back when you push the floor. One more. And then find a flat back, bring the right hand back to normal and switch sides. Left fingers point back at you. You're looking at your left palm. Drop the wrist into the shoulder. Inhale, heart moves forward, cat cow pose. Exhale, push the floor, cat pose. Keep it going. All right, next time you come back through a flat back, pause there, both hands back to normal. Tuck your toes here. Let's take some down dog time. So tuck your toes. You can lift your hips up and back. And this is our first down dog. So it's very liberal. It's very dynamic. Walk it out here. Okay, maybe close your eyes and just find your balance. Find your center of gravity. And let's walk the hips over to one side and walk them the other way. Roll the shoulder blades, get some extra mobility in those shoulders. <clears throat> Both directions with the shoulder blades. And remember to give your head a good shake, yes. I know. And then let's move a little bit, friends. Inhale here. Let's get the right leg up and out behind. You can bend the left knee if the left leg is kind of cold here. <laughs> and exhale, drop that right foot between your hands. Boom. Coming up to a crescent lunge. Inhaling here, reach up, lift your heart. Lift, 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 lift. 
And then exhale, all the hands down around the front foot, back foot steps forward, fold. Inhale, roll yourself up nice and tall. Reach up with that right knee. So the right knee is coming up as your hands come up. Exhale here, send that right foot back slowly in a crescent lunge again. Inhaling, heart up. Exhaling, hands down around the front foot. Step it back to down dog. Other side. Inhaling here, left leg up and out behind. Exhaling, step that foot between your hands. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, all hands down around that front foot. Step the back foot forward and fold. Inhale, roll it up. Left knee rises as your hands come up. So one leg on the floor, one leg in the air. Exhale, send the left foot back, drop the toes, crescent lunge, inhaling, heart up. Exhaling, all hands down, down dog. Again, inhaling here, right leg up and out behind. We're adding something here. Exhale, drive the right knee towards your right elbow, pause. Inhale, send it back. Exhale, drop the right foot between your hands. Inhaling, reach it up, crescent lunge. Exhaling, all hands down, fold. Both feet forward, fold. Roll it up, inhale, right knee up. Exhale, right foot back. Crescent lunge, inhale. Exhale, all hands down, down dog. Inhale, left leg up and out behind. Exhale, left knee to left elbow, pause. Inhale, left leg back. Exhale, left foot forward. Okay, inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, all hands down, back foot steps forward, fold. Roll it up, inhale, left knee up. Exhale, send the left toe back. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, all hands down, down dog. Again, adding another step. Inhaling here, right leg up and out behind. Bend the right knee, point the toe to the left. And exhale, right knee to right elbow. Inhale, send it up and out behind. Again, point the right toe to the left. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. Inhale, send it back. This time straight out behind you. Exhale, drop that foot between your hands. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, all hands down in front, fold. Inhale, roll it up, right knee up. Maybe extend the right knee if that feels okay. Exhale, right foot back. Crescent lunge, inhale. Exhale, all hands down, fold, or bad town dog. <laughs> Other side, inhaling, left leg up and out behind. Point that toe to the right, right, left toe to the right. Exhale, left knee to left elbow, pause. Inhale, left toe up and out behind you to the right. Exhale, left knee to right elbow, pause. Inhale, send it up and out behind you. Exhale, foot between your hands, boom. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, all hands down, step forward and fold. Roll it up, inhale. Left knee rises up, maybe extend the right leg if you like. And exhale, send the left toe back, inhaling, crescent. Exhaling, all hands down, down dog. Take a few breaths at down dog here. Maybe a little more warmth, maybe a little more warmth in your legs, your shoulders. And let's play around with some rolling down dogs here, just bringing a little more warmth to shoulders, back, legs. Okay, on your inhale, come up on your tippy tippy toes and then curl your spine to look at your belly button, really rounding your spine as you send your shoulders forward over your wrists. And when your shoulders are over your wrists, arch your spine. Okay, bending your knees, looking forward, press your hips back to a down dog. Okay, 
Okay, so let's do it a few more times. Tippy toes as you inhale, rounded spine forward to plank. Exhale, arch spine to down dog, bent knees. So kind of a wavy movement, rolling up and down the spine here. Feel free to make it your own, okay? There might be some little, some little aspect of this that you really wanna hone in on and go really slow. But just looking for some fluidity in the spine, allowing the whole body to flow fluidly. Building some warmth in the shoulders. Next time you roll forward and you're in a plank, hold and breathe. So bring in some more warmth to your shoulders here. Push the floor down in your plank. And remember, you can drop your knees. You always have that option, okay? So floor is pushing away. Belly button is wrapping up and in toward the spine. If your legs are long, push back through your heels and try to bear some of your weight on your feet, okay? Use your lower body here. It doesn't have to be all upper. Could you slightly pull your elbows in toward each other and lift the heart a little bit forward? <sighs> nice challenge here in your plank. One more big breath right here. And as you exhale, send it back to down dog. <sighs> Inhaling here, right leg up and out behind. Exhaling here, drop that right foot between your hands, boom. Walk the hands out to the left side of the mat. Find a forward, a wide leg forward fold, and I'll spin around to face you. So your toes, you can turn your toes out to the side of the mat. Okay, hands are under your shoulders. And your spine has enough space to be long. So your hands are not very close to your feet. They're about a spine length away. And let's start to bend into one knee at a time. Bend into one, bend into the other. And you can start this off very tentatively and slowly, just kind of feeling it out, side to side. So let's talk about this movement while you're doing it. As you move side to side, think of not only moving your hips to that side, but also back so that as you cultivate this uh, lunging movement in a leg, you're also cultivating length in the spine rather than a curved, okay, a laterally curved spine. And then see if you can really lift in your arches here. How does it feel when you lift your arches? Does it allow you to move differently? What if you even lifted your toes and really rocked into the outer edges of your foot? This should feel great in your ankles. Okay, warming up the inner leg, all of that. Okay, next time you come up through center, bend your knees just enough that you can put one hand on each thigh and press yourself up to standing. And then pop your heels inward so that your toes point out and we'll drop the hips nice and low, level with your knees. So from here, grab your thighs. You can think of grabbing just above your knees. And then I want you to feel kind of supported. So notice as you sink nice and low in your hips that your hands on your thighs are giving you some great support. So use your hands, please push down into your thighs so that your spine gets super long, okay? Always worried about that long spine here. So not only is your spine lengthening as you press into your legs, but your hands are also pushing your knees slightly away from each other, like you're opening a book, okay? So think of your legs as two pages of a book that you're trying to open. So inner thigh stretch, back of the thigh stretch, it's all good. Take here a long inhale as you push into your legs, make your neck extremely long, as you exhale, drop your left shoulder as you look over your right shoulder. Really press into your legs, okay? Back to center on your inhale. Other side on your exhale. Drop the right, look over the left. Push, push, push your legs. Let's take a few more like this. Center on your inhale. Twist it on your exhale. 
Now you can make this your own. You can make it really subtle and gentle. But if you want a really great back massage, you can really use your own upper body strength to press into your legs and get that great ringing out twist of your whole back body. A few more times on each side, okay? Okay, next time you come back up through center, extend your knees, oh, point your toes out to the side that you're looking again. And then if you grab on your hips, see if you could hinge at your hips with your longest spine as you come down. So enjoying all the length that we just cultivated in your spine. Allow your hands to come down under your shoulders. And then perhaps here, turn your toes slightly in and allow the top of your head to point straight at the floor. Let's take some time here. Prasarita Padottanasana, your wide leg forward fold. Intense stretch of the back side of the body. If it's too much, guys, bend your knees. No problem, okay? You can always bend. If this feels really nice and you want to walk your hands back between your feet, go ahead and do it. Sounds great if you want to do that. If your head touches the floor, shorten your stance. And if you really like this, you can grab one leg with each arm and hug your legs closer. Just for your last few breaths here, see if you could let your spine hang as completely dead weight. So allow your spine to traction out and get slightly longer here. Long in the belly, long in the neck, long in the rib cage, and the low back. All right, what a great posture. Coming back to hands on the floor, please. Walk your hands back over by your right foot. Point those right toes forward and I'll meet you in a down dog. Walk it out here, notice how you're feeling. And let's take a little vinyasa in between. So you're always welcome to skip the vinyasa and just take a break if you'd rather that. Heart moves forward here, find an inhale, forward to plank. And exhale, walk to your hands and fold. Roll it up, inhale. Exhale, sit into your chair posture, Utkatasana. So bend your knees, look up as you drop that tailbone. Inhale to stand, maybe lift your heart here. And exhale to fold. Halfway up for your inhale. Big fold on your exhale. Palms are down here, inhale back to plank. Exhale, lower yourself down. Inhale for your cobra. Pull your heart forward. Pull, pull, pull. Exhale, down, dot. Walk it out here. Maybe five or six breaths in this down, dot. We'll make this one really intentional. Grip the mat strong with your hands. Pull the mat back with your feet. If you could lift your kneecaps a little more, would it allow you to drop your heels another millimeter? <sighs> Breathing softness into the backs of the legs and the armpits. Maybe the elbows can move slightly closer. Second side, here we go. Inhaling, left leg up and out behind. Exhaling, drop the left foot between your hands. Okay, walk your hands out to the right side of the mat. Okay, back in another wide leg forward fold. I'll spin around to face you. So here, I'd like us to get a little more into the legs, which we've warmed up, okay? 
take a moment just to bend side to side, kind of feeling out that feeling of the hips moving back and to the side at the same time. Okay, and then bend your knees just enough. Hands come to your thighs and press yourself up to standing. Okay, so I like to just get my arms out of the way here and just hold them. You might decide you want your hands on your hips or something else, but find something that works for you. We're gonna bend into the left knee, dropping the hips not only to the left, but back. At the same time, would you like to point your right toes up? Try that out. Okay, skandasana. Come back up to standing on your inhale. Other side, exhale here. Bend into your right knee. Drop the hips not just to the right, but back. Maybe point the left toes up. Inhale back up to standing. Let's take a few more like that. Exhale to one side. You decide how low you want to go. It might not be low today. That's not a problem. Inhale to stand. Exhale to drop into skandasana. Keep it going, feel it out. Maybe you wanna adjust your stance, make it shorter or longer, okay? See if you wanna drop a little lower or maybe keep it higher. And then I wanna offer you kind of a spicy challenge here. Next time you come down, could you switch sides without coming up? And then come up. Now exhale to bring it down, switch sides, and then come up. Try that a few more times. Maybe two more times on each side. Okay, friends, one more time. Next time you come up, let this go. Okay, again, grab your hips. See if you could fold yourself all the way back down with a really long spine. Okay, hands on the floor here. I'd like to try maybe a headstand with you, okay? If headstand does not sound fun and does not sound like a good idea, that's okay. But see if you just want to maybe hit some of the, the preparation, some of the... Um, the stops on the way to headstand that are not necessarily a headstand. So I'll turn to the side so that we can communicate visually better. So from your wide leg forward fold, just come down to your knees, right? And then hands under shoulders. See if you wanna take the top of your head to the floor so that you're looking straight across the mat. So. Try to take your head far enough away from your hands that they make a triangle, an equilateral triangle. Your two wrists and the top of your head make an equal sides triangle. And you're looking at the back of the mat. And this is where you can start beginning to feel out, putting weight on the top of your head. Now you've got to find the right spot. You don't want to be looking up at yourself and you don't want to be looking down at the floor. You're looking straight across. So find that perfect spot atop your head. And if you decide you want to keep going, you can tuck your toes and just lift your knees today, okay? So maybe this is where you'd like to stop, and this will be your headstand today. If you already do headstands and you don't need me to talk you through it, go ahead and come on up. You don't need me to talk you through it. But if you want to tiptoe towards your hands, then maybe today you can think about putting your knees on top of your elbows, okay? Maybe that's where you are today. If it's okay to lift your uh, feet and just use your elbows, that's great. Try lifting one leg at a time in your headstand. And you're up, okay? Breathe, pull everything in toward the center and keep looking straight across the mat. It's fun to play around sometimes with making shapes with your legs so you can do like a a straddle or a, some kind of shape with your legs. You can bend your knees, play around with it. Okay, do be playful and do keep breathing. <laughs> As you're ready to come down, I'd say come down with just one knee at a time. See if you can control one knee to the elbow, other knee to the elbow. Feet come to the floor. Your feet can walk away. 
back to hands and knees. From here, guys, let's take a child's pose. So kind of a heady, uppity, uppity posture. Child's um, headstand. And after we do an uppity posture like that, we need to ground so that we don't get too fluttery. Notice how you feel. Notice the sensations on the top of your head. From here, walk your hands back up by your legs and you can sit your hips out to one side. Take your legs out front. And we'll just shake it out here. Windshield wipers maybe. Okay, one of my number one favorite counter poses to headstand is a shoulder stand. Okay, they, they go hand in hand. So as you're ready, tuck your hands behind your knees, come on down. And then just like you're about to come into a bridge posture, ground your feet by your hips, hands by your hips, looking straight up at the ceiling, okay? And that looking straight up is going to be key because we want to keep the back of the neck softly arching off the floor. We don't want the neck to collapse and the chin to crunch in toward the neck. Okay, you can see how that's not something we wanna do in our shoulder stand. So keep that neutral cervical spine, please. And again, if shoulder stand is something that you're not super interested in, don't feel like you have to do it. Just follow the steps along the way and see where you wanna stop. So if you already do shoulder stand, you don't need me to talk you through it. But if you want to walk through it, here we go. Press your hands down by your hips in your laying down posture, and then move your knees towards your chest. Press extra hard into your arms, and then see if you can lift your hips, pulling your knees close to your forehead. So this might be where you want to stay. You might back it up. If this is okay, and your nose can point straight up, take your hands to your lower back, and see if you can walk them onto your lowest ribs and get your elbows as close as you can get them, okay? So your upper body is now your base. The back of your head, your shoulder blades, and your arms are your base. So push them down, please, and make them strong. If all is going well, you can point your knees up. And if that's going well, you can point your toes up. And then I want you to shoot your body up from the floor, strong and active, and breathe. Big breath in, big breath out. Those toes are trying to touch the ceiling. The legs are strong. And please look up. All right, friends. I like to hold the shoulder stand just as long as the head stand that I did before so that it feels like a really, uh, a really good counter pose. Like I actually did <laughs> counter out all that head stand energy. So once you feel like you've held your shoulder stand as long as your head stand, bend the knees back in towards your forehead. At this point, guys, I wanna come out slowly. So put your hands back on the floor out there, okay? And then extend your knees as much as feels good. Don't, you don't have to put your feet on the floor, but just extend the knees. See if you could roll down in super slow motion. Really slow. So like one vertebra per second. Can you control this descent? It's not easy, but your upper body strength can really help out. Once your hips land, drop your feet. Mm. Okay, time to rest. If you extend your legs and arms, then you are in Shavasana. If some other posture suits you better today to rest, then please take that one. Allow your eyes to close and your breath to settle back to Soft, effortless breath. Let your body soak up the sensations from your practice. Follow the breath, 
Follow the inhale. Stay present for the exhale. Feeling expansive, infinite on your inhales. And with your exhales, release any tension that might be still hiding in your muscles, your joints. Let the jaw hang open. Let the forehead soften. Please keep resting like this as long as you can. Thanks so much for joining me.